this. But this is really the piece that explains that on, 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 a, on, a, on a biochemical level, what's actually happening in the body. Yeah. Um, yes, so here's a little science lesson then. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll, keep it, I'll keep it quite simple, but I think it is really, really helpful to understand it from your own point of view as well, because I think looking at it against some of you know, the different types of graded exercise and pacing advice that is out there, if you understand what's going on, then it's much easier for you to assess, you know, where you might to be with regards to, you know, how much to push yourself and, and possibly when not to push yourself and when that may not be so helpful. So if you take it right down to the sort of cellular level within your cells, you've got uh, units called mitochondria, which are basically your, your little engines, they're energy production units. And within their, you know, this is a very simplified uh, picture so if there's some biochemists amongst you I, I apologize um, but basically what you're looking at on the top of the cycle you've got ATP which basically stands for adenosine adenosine triphosphate uh, the thing to kind of really just remember is on the top there's triphosphate the T at the bottom there's ADP which is D phosphate ie2 and then right at the bottom, there's AMP, which is monophosphate. So we're talking about two, three, two, one. You start with, this, with a charged up energy unit at the top, where you've got basically three units joined together. So you've got two bonds, if you like, if you think of three balls joined together with this piece of string or something like that. Let's also say there's actually a video, <laughs> on, a video. A video on the blog and YouTube of us using ping pong balls to demonstrate this. Um, but anyway. <laughs> yes, didn't bring those with me, sorry. Um, to when you're doing something that requires energy, the way your body is able to give you that is it breaks one of those bonds and that releases energy. What's, I, that's the little arrow there. What's then meant to happen is you to recharge your batteries, i.e. sort of reattach that unit to get back to three on top of the, on top of the cycle. And this should be a nice little smooth circle and cycle that sort of keeps going on, um, you know, throughout the day and keep you going and keep you active. Now, if you're revving your engines too fast, faster that you, than you can either recharge or faster than you can produce the initial ATP units, then that's where the issues start coming up. Now, obviously, you know, to produce the ATP units, you need raw ingredients. So you need uh, micronutrients like magnesium. You need something called D-ribose, which is simple sugar, you need carnitine and B3. All of those are something that have to come from your food. Now, we were talking beforehand, you know, if you have that kind of either maladaptive stress response, you've got a, you know, a bit of an adrenal cycle going on there where you're not digesting particularly well, you may not be getting enough of these raw ingredients to keep your ATP unit production going up. Chronic stress very... Uh, dramatically depletes your magnesium stores, for example. Hence also, you know, can be linked to muscle pain and problems with muscles because magnesium is one of the big minerals that um, really controls your muscle function. Carnitine and B3, I see a lot of deficiencies in those where people have digestive problems. They seem to be somewhat trickier to digest if you're not producing sufficient quantities of digestive enzymes, for example. So you may be lacking some of the raw ingredients to produce the energy units in the first place. And so if you keep pedaling your bike, uh, you know, there's going to be an accumulation of ADP and you know, not enough ATP, the charged up units, to kind of keep you going. Now, initially that's okay and you can keep going for a while. Uh, but if that cycle starts struggling and you're still pushing, then what starts happening is your body's going, well, hang on a minute, I've got to get this energy from somewhere. It's not coming from the top of the cycle anymore. So what else can I do? Well, okay, actually, there's still one bond that I can break because you still have the two units uh, stuck together. So what then happens is you break that final bond and now you just have the single unit. You have AMP, <coughs> an edicide monophosphate. The only snag is that once that happens, those single units essentially fall off that cycle. So now, well, what actually happens with them, you mostly secrete, or you know, you, you secrete them um, out through your urine. So you're basically peeing out your energy. Um, and then, you know, 
and then the plug really gets pulled out and then you have to just rest because now your body just really has to go out there, try to gather those raw ingredients and start producing enough ATP units for you to operate again. And it takes at least a couple of days to do that, which is why in that crash, for often for two days you feel completely wiped and then hope, depending upon the health of this, this system, you then start to hopefully feel better. Um, this is also where um, things like um, pacing certainly have their place, you know, because it stops people from constantly putting pressure on the mitochondria and burning this out. The, without going to a whole long story around pacing, the, the, one of the, the challenges pacing can be that the purpose is to break, boom, and bust, but if that's still done as a primarily intellectual activity of I should do this but not this, you're still basically not learning to actually listen to your body and, and, and that be deciding what you do and what you don't do. Um, there's also, we, we define um, four different types of tiredness, for example. Some kinds of tiredness, for example, real physical tiredness, respond really well to proper rest. If what you have is what we call emotional tiredness, then actually sometimes you do better through having contact with other people and do something that's more nourishing. But without, again, there's, we could talk for a, two hours, there's, there's a really helpful, um, quite detailed article about this called The Art of Pacing on, on this website, the Freedom From Me website. If you click on the blog tab across the top, there's, there's what Sam just talked about around the mitochondria. There's another video on the adrenals. There's a whole very detailed article about pacing. There's a huge amount of this information there in more detail. Um, but we're going to wrap up in a moment to give some time to take questions and that kind of thing. But I guess as a, um, as a kind, of, uh, kind of closing point, I guess one of the main things we're really saying here is that ME is a hugely complex illness on one level, and yet there are, all, there are also answers to be found. And if you study and research something enough, you start to see patterns, and you start to see things that are going on. Um, and actually, the, in the information pack that we, um, that, that, you can re, that we can send out to you, the report in there is called Emmy in the 21st Century, You're No Longer a Mystery. And basically the idea is, it's not a mystery in the way that it used to be. I should also say um, in there, <laughs> voila, I should also say, beautiful assistant, I should also say in there there's a DVD um, of three patient recovery stories which was basically made by um, a recovered patient of mine um, when he was about 17 years old. He basically decided that uh, once he got well, he wanted to make films. So he came along to help out. Um, has anyone heard of Fiona Agonbash, your deep book and difficult beat with yoga? Fiona's a good friend of mine. I really like her work. I actually produced um, that DVD, and Paul helped out on the day. He and I were then driving back to London, and he said, we should make a documentary about the clinic. I was all very confident at 17 years old, so I said, well, OK, let's do it. Um, so he and I spent the summer travelling around um, the UK interviewing various patients from the clinic about their stories, but also the clinic team around various tips and techniques and that kind of thing. And it was about four years ago now that we made it, but uh, three and a half years ago. But um, there's a lot of great stuff that's in there. So as I say, the information pack is completely free. Um, whether you decide to go further the clinic or not is on one level irrelevant. At least it gives more information around what's happening. Um, so and the slips are just there. The you slip, can slip, slips are there, yeah. Um, I should also say before we go to questions that um, I mentioned we have a registered charity that we set up um, to raise money for research. So if anyone wants to buy copies of my book um, for <laughs> £10, or basically I buy the books um, for £5 from the publisher and then if you give £10, the whole £10 goes to charity. Basically you and I give £5 each to the charity. Um, and it's the forward to the book is actually by Shirley Conran, OBH, actually a patient of the clinic. and talks a bit about her experience as well. Um, but anyway, we've talked quite a lot.